Well, hello, everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. And today we have a rare treat, a gentleman named George Glazier, who runs a company called Western Uranium and Vanadium, a uh, U.S.-based company, which is in the, as you can perhaps discern, the uranium and vanadium space. Uh, George, thank you for being here. Uh, You have a, uh, you have uh, a, 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 not just an asset, but a producing asset uh, in the United States. Can you give us just a quick rundown? What is it? Where is it? And what, what, what do you have there? Sure. Yeah, the Sunday Mine Complex has been a, a producing uh, complex uh, for a number of years. We acquired the property from Energy Fuels in 2014 and have turned it on uh, production. There are actually four separate mines, all permitted, all developed, uh, we're in one of them right now, producing and stockpiling ore and preparing to go into the other three. So the asset is, you know, an asset that has produced significant quantities of uranium, vanadium in the past and is ready to produce uh, going forward. It's located where? We do have other assets, but this is our first production asset. Okay. And where is it located exactly? It, it's in western Colorado. Okay. Yeah, so so it's just historical uranium mining country out west there. Uh, so in the United States right now, there's very, very little uranium being produced. When you look at global production versus U.S. actual pounds in the ground production. Uh, so are, are, you, are you one of those people that's part of that Department of Energy statistic that shows that there's actual production? Uh, there's really actually no, virtually no production. What we're doing is producing ore and the Department of Energy basically use their production on yellow cake coming out of the final process. Right, right. right now, they're probably producing almost none. The little bit that's coming out is just clean up probably uh, maybe a little alternate feed material from energy fuels, but not much there. And then the cleanup of the old well fields from in situ producing uh, companies probably produces a little bit, almost none. Uh, production of yellow cake. They don't report production of ore until it's actually refined. Right. Okay. Now, uh, just to get to sort of get a broader perspective, obviously, you know, there's an issue uh, with Russia and Ukraine and the war and sanctions, what have you. And a large amount of Western uh, uh, uranium, uh, you know, certainly for the final and goes through Russia. They have an extensive uranium and, uh, you know, nuclear complex there. Uh, what do the current world circumstances indicate for a company like, like yours, like Western Uranium and Vanadium? What, well, how, how does how does what happens in Europe affect what happens in Colorado? Well, substantially, obviously, if we look at you know the reliance of the Germans on Russian gas mm-hmm. uh, and how that is affecting their whole energy supply, the U.S. utilities are not as reliant on Russian uh, nuclear fuel. But they're fairly reliant. And if you cut that off quickly, potentially, we would have to cut our production from the utilities. So I don't think that's going to happen quickly. But I think the idea that we cannot be reliant on potentially unstable sources of nuclear fuel, the utilities certainly are going to look at Western suppliers for all components of nuclear fuel. And I think that's good for not only our company, it's good for all Western producers, whether uranium, conversion, or enrichment. I think the, the, the lesson we've learned is you basically have to have stable uh, sources of the supply. And whether Russian has been a stable source in the past, but with the political issues now, I think we're going to be forced to look at you know very stable Western suppliers. Well, for... for- uh, p- investors out there or potential uh, share buyers of a company like yours. Uh, t- tell us about the, the nature of the company. What's your share structure? Uh, do you have some money in the bank? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, have you been raising money? What, what, what's going on with your company in that, in that respect? Okay. Yeah. So we've got about, I think, as Rob mentioned, he's got about, we've got about 9 million U.S. in the bank. Uh, we had a capital raise uh, six months ago. Uh, we had uh, some of the warrants come in that were in the money, and we had a significant profit from the sale of uranium. So we're well cashed up at this point uh, for what our plans are in the near future. Our, our share structure, we have you know, outstanding around 40, 40 some million shares of sh- uh, stock. Don't need to dilute uh, in, in the near future. We've got plenty of cash to do what we're doing. 
and enough cash to get into a cash flow. We've also got revenues from our oil and gas uh, royalties, which is not insignificant, comes in each month. You can look at those quantities on our press releases and the range of forty to $50,000 a month. Uh, for a small company like us, that's a fairly significant amount. It looks like it's going to go forward with you know, oil and gas prices staying high and the demand for oil and gas going to continue. So we're in a very good cash position. We don't need to raise any more money uh, in the near future. We can go into production and start cash flowing from our, our production of uranium and vanadium. Well, it's a, it's, it comes across as a very strong story with a, a tight share structure, uh, money in the bank, no need to raise. And basically, uh, what the, the trigger for really uh, going into uh, more extensive operations is what? Just higher, higher uranium prices based on just other market conditions? Is that, is that what you're looking for? Well, yeah, yeah obviously, uh, we, we, could, we could make money at today's prices. But the reason is you probably could make a lot more money at what's projected to be the price in the next two years. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason for us to dilute, uh, you know, uh, our, our, our re- resource base by producing and selling uranium, say, at $50, because we don't need to right now. And I think for the good of the shareholders, the resources should be hold, held and sold at the highest possible price, which generates the highest cash flows for the company. This company will be valued in the next few years based on our significant cash flows. And that'll be based on higher uranium prices and probably stable vanadium prices. Vanadium goes up and down, but we think vanadium also will be a driver of cash flows for this company. Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't even mention vanadium. I mean, it's used in, in steel making and uh, uh, alloying. And then there's a whole another angle on vanadium redox batteries for you know utility scale power storage. Uh, boy, we could talk about this all day, but we don't have all day and we're, we're supposed to keep them short and focused so that the listeners and the viewers out there uh, don't, uh, don't drift off. But to the viewers and listeners out there, the name is Western Uranium and Vanadium. Uh, they're traded in Canada and on the U.S. Uh, OTC. Uh, we have George Glazier again with us today. And George, we thank you for your time and we wish you well in everything that you do. Thank you, sir.